Hey guys, how are you? I am just sitting down having some tea and I thought I would do a q and A. I I actually posted on the community tab of YouTube and over on Instagram and asked if you had any questions, got a bunch of questions, kind of organized them a little bit and we'll see how many I can get through covering a bunch of different topics from like DIY specific questions to ADHD questions to personal questions and all sorts of stuff. So I have them in a Word document, you know, and I'll just see how many I get through. Ready? Shall we start? They're gonna be fast answers, so. Just providing the right amount of detail, hopefully. How do you determine that a DIY will be worth the effort and cheaper than buying? So my first step is always to do a bunch of research to see if I can buy it for an affordable price. I will often spend a lot of time doing that, actually. And then when I figure that I either can't find the design that I want or it's just not available at the price that I'd be willing to buy it for, then I'll see if I can make it for a cheaper price. Do you have a big DIY project that you can think of that seems too big to tackle or doesn't seem possible to do at the moment? And I absolutely do. That project is that I would like to design and build my own house. I'm glad I haven't been able to do it so far because I don't have some of the learnings in place that would lead to me building my ideal house. For example, I am still struggling with figuring out what kind of designs have really long longevity versus just being really trendy. And I wanna make sure that whatever I would design my house in has longevity. I also wanna figure out like where houses should be facing, how the windows should be, so that I get the optimal type of light that I want around my house. I just wanna make sure that it's like a place that has lots of trees, lots of nature, and my ideal kind of home. So that's a project that's too big right now, but one day, Fingers crossed, I am gonna be building my own house, I hope. How did you get into DIY? My first ever DIY project was a cross-stitching project when I was in grade six, I think. I, like I did crafts before that, obviously. But really into DIY, my first big project, I didn't even DIY myself. I just came up with kind of a plan. It was a bench. My cousin built it for me. And we kind of worked on it together. He, he physically built it though with his tools. And then I finished it and I just was hooked ever since then. What is the first tool a beginner DIYer should invest in? In my opinion, a drill. I think you can do so much around your home that's even just so basic with a drill. Um, a lot of people are really scared to hang things, even curtains. Um, if, if, and if you, don't know how to, if you don't have a drill, then how can you do stuff like that? So I think a drill is like the number one thing. Next to that would be probably a saw. Have you ever messed up a DIY project where you scrapped the entire project as there were no fixes? If so, what was it? And how did you overcome the fear of messing up another project to be able to start a new one. So I do have a, I probably, I have a couple projects that I've completely failed and haven't continued on with, but the ones that are coming to my mind are actually sewing projects. Sewing was like my first DIY love. I've taken on some really big projects. I made my grad ball dress, which is a huge project, but I bought a coat at a thrift store and I wanted to adjust it myself and like do all sorts of alterations. I took it apart, so I bought it, I took it apart. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't working. The material, like my needles weren't going through, kept breaking my needles. So yeah, I just abandoned it. And how did you overcome the fear to be able to start a new project? That's pretty simple. I just didn't pick a sewing project as my next project. I just did something unrelated and we we're golden. How are your herringbone floors holding up and how are your wood beams holding up? Is there any warping or anything like that? The answer is no, both of them are holding up awesome. I'd say pretty much like the day that I installed them. Where did you learn and how did you build your skill set? Did you how did you learn to use more advanced tools like Cricut or wood cutting and stuff like that? I think I got a couple questions around that, so I might have bundled them. I learned basically everything that I know how to do just through like thinking of something that I want to do and then looking up how to do it. So using like saws or more any advanced tools literally i just would youtube it and i if it was something i was scared of like saws i just watched like 50 safety demonstration videos before i went and started it for the first time and that really helped just don't rely on just watching one video but like watch several videos and then you can really get the hang of it the second part of the question was i have adhd too and i want to get uh, started with a bunch of stuff including my own youtube but i feel like i get stuck in the i don't know how to do it mindset and then half and then the thought of having to dedicate the time to learn and research drains me an executive function kicks in. All I can say here is I'm totally with you. I totally have the exact same thing that pushes me from starting new projects and learning new tools. And it is also what keeps me buying something. Like I will bite the bullet after a lot, a lot of time of research and realizing that I wanna do something, I'll buy it and then I'll keep it in the box and I won't open that box for like five months or six months or sometimes even a year with the pocket hole jig, for example. And a lot of times it's really not as hard as you think it's gonna be, but 
just just try it and just try and push yourself to learn. It's often not as hard as you think it will be, but it will often take a little bit longer than you think it will take. Now to more some more personal questions. Do you use YouTube to fully support yourself? Yes, I do. Do you and your husband work on your YouTube together? Does he do his own career? So he does help me um, here and now, you know, but no, he has his own job. It would be a dream of mine for him to do this full time one day if YouTube could like grow bigger. But right now it's just, it's, it's, he has his own job. How old were you when you met your husband? We were, we were in the first year of university, so however old that makes us. What were your school paths? Did you do any college or university design school? Oh, and do you both work on your content together? That was me and my husband. So we both went to university. We both studied business. I did marketing, he did finance. And do you both work together on your content? Okay, so I do wanna just reiterate, because I feel like a lot of people have this belief that like we work and design and like build everything together. I typically will come up with designs and I'll figure out what the plan is to actually build it. We'll go buy supplies together a lot of the time, sometimes not, depending on if he has time and availability. And then I will pretty much almost always do the majority of the actual work that's there. He'll help me if he has time and if it's something that like, just to speed up the process or if I really just need a second set of hands. How old are you? I could tell you right now, but I just want to know how old you think I am. So please let me know how old you think I am and maybe I will tell you next video. What is your ethnicity? Are you Indian or are you Filipina? I got several different questions about my ethnicity and they were all like one person said, are you Indian? Someone else said, are you Filipina? I am actually mixed. So my mom is Chinese and my dad is Middle Eastern and I'm just like a bunch of different things. So I am not actually Indian or Filipina. But I think that a lot of people do think I'm those two things. Are you happy? Someone asked. Thank you so much for asking that question. That's really sweet. I would say I'm, I'm not always happy, but typically like I'm reasonably happy, I would say. Uh, I don't really strive towards happiness per se, but I think I strive more towards contentment and just like really being aware of what we have and being, um, appreciative and grateful for what I have and sometimes there's things that are going on that are sad and sometimes there are things that are going on that are stressful and that might take away from the happiness peak but overall like contentment is what I strive towards. How is it to live by your parents? So I live by my mom and she lives in like in the next building to me and I love it so much. Do the Home Depot people know who you are? They do not know who I am to my knowledge. Um, I've actually only been recognized by one person ever and she worked at Michael's. So go figure, that makes sense. Do you listen to any podcasts? Currently, I do not. I have, there've been a few that I have liked, but I would be open to podcast recommendations if you have any. Where do you draw inspiration? I wish I could say there was one specific place, but there isn't. I try and, I do consume a little bit of Instagram content and I typically try to look at accounts that are in different parts of the world, like Germany or Bali or different places that just have different vibes to them, I guess. And that really interests me and spikes my curiosity. But yeah, there's no like one specific place. Ever want to remodel spaces outside of your home? <sighs> I would, but it it's too much pressure for me. I feel like the first thing would be that I really like to design to my own inspiration. And when you're designing someone else's space, you have to really think about what they would like and their style. And I don't enjoy that nearly as much. And I think the other thing is it's too much pressure. Like I would be too focused on like, are they gonna like it? Are they gonna like it? And that would stress me out. So I, I currently just like doing my space. Maybe if I was more trained in interior design and knew all the more like technical way to go about it and had that baseline, I would, but I don't have that. If you chose to buy a house, will it be a fix it upper or move in ready with minor changes? To be honest, I mentioned I wanna build a house. Um, if I were buying a house that was already built, I probably, I would want it to be in a decently good state, to be honest, just being honest. That's just my personal preference. I. There's something I struggle with a little bit with like having to really do like fixer upper per se, but with minor changes, I mean, I would probably, I, I would like for it to be in a good state and then be able to customize it to what I want if I were buying a house that was already built and not designing it from scratch. My ideal scenario, if I do just say, would be to design it and have it built by a builder to a certain point and then be able to finish it myself. Like maybe I put in my own floors, I do my own backsplashes, I paint the walls myself, I would put in 
beams myself, but like maybe less of like the mixing the concrete, laying the foundation, that stuff. Maybe I could just work with someone to do that kind of thing. But yeah. Would you ever consider creating an e-commerce store? Yeah, I hope I can do that one day in the future. Uh, that's definitely a goal for me to have some sort of business, I guess. And my background in business, my husband's background in business, that would be a goal for sure. Okay, now to some questions around like ADHD and anxiety. Have you ever had anxiety that came in the way of you making your home cozy? For example, you didn't do crafts because of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think the um, anxiety of like figuring things out and learning something or feeling like there's too many steps in the way that actually has gotten in the way for me. When have you been diagnosed with ADHD? Did you notice it since school or did you mani or did it manifest in a certain moment of your life? I was accidentally first diagnosed. I don't know if it was fully accidentally. I actually have some troubles reading if you haven't noticed, but, or maybe I've repeated things. So you're only gonna get the polished version, but I was actually diagnosed when I was in grade one with dyslexia. And because I had reading problems, I still kind of reverse things a lot when I'm reading normally. Anyway, I digress. When I was in grade 12, I was diagnosed again. Both of those times I actually went to like educational psychologists. They did extensive tests that lasted days of testing essentially. And when I was in grade 12, I was diagnosed with ADHD and issues with my working memory. And now as an adult and doing YouTube, I'm actually realizing how much ADHD impacts me more than just like, oh, there's a class that I'm not that interested in. I'm struggling to like learn science because like my brain can't hold different types of information in the right way to be able to learn. And now it's like, I can see it actually just impacts me in general. Like I've talked about before, I want to do things so much. Like I will want to do a project, but like all those steps that clutter my mind or all the different projects that I have on my mind can make it so it's so hard for me to start. So yeah, I've definitely noticed it. It, it's been there my whole life, really, but I was officially diagnosed in grade 12. What helps you start pro projects with ADHD? I'm having a very hard time starting a project, so I'm wondering if you have any tips. If you write out the steps, actually, that can help because I think what happens to me, at least, is a lot of the steps will just be jumbled, hitting me at all times. Like, if I needed to make over a room, I'm just giving a big example, I would literally every single day, probably twice a day, I would be thinking, what paint color? What color wood stain? Oh, but what if this goes wrong? What about my bed frame? What about my side table? What about this side table? And if I were sitting down to just think about like, oh, I gotta work on my bed frame, then I'd be like, oh, okay, well, what if the bed frame color doesn't match with the beams? What, like, it's a struggle. So I think just writing down the steps that you have just to complete can be really helpful. How do you learn to appreciate your own work in DIYs and not feel like you could have done better? To be honest, I I really do appreciate my own work a lot and not feel like you could have done better. Sometimes I feel like I could have done better, but I still will always appreciate it because I appreciate the time and effort that goes into it and then I appreciate the outcome. But yeah, there's certainly like, there's certain things that I could have done better. For example, with the headboard, I put batting down and it made it so that there was no lumps and it was super smooth. For the bed frame, I didn't put batting down and there is some bumpiness. It still looks good and to everyone else who sees it, they're like, oh, it's still, it's good. But to me, I'm like, oh, I wish I did that. I wish I, I could have done better. But I still appreciate that I made it and that it came together. Um, so yeah. Where and how do you keep all your craft supplies and tools organized? I've never seen them stored in your videos until you pull them out for a project. I'm actually a very disorganized person and they're hidden in closets or on other sides of the room that you don't see. And are they organized? No, they're not. I hope to one day get organized. I hope to one day like organize my craft closet and have like built-ins and stuff like that. That would be a dream for me, but currently I'm not there. What equipment do you use to make your videos? Like what camera, editing software, etc. I wanted to start making a YouTube channel, but on a super tight budget. I had other questions about what equipment I use um, and what my process is like. So I'll link all the equipment that I use down below and you can get started with a phone. Like I film my travel, like when I travel and I do vlogs or if I'm not at home and you would see any footage from anywhere that's outside of my home, I've taken it with just my, like my phone. So you can get started just with that. But I think in terms of like having a good tripod, having a decent mic or having, if you're actually having a camera, making sure that the camera is like taking nice quality video footage, that stuff makes a big difference for me at least in terms of how much frustration I had while I'm actually making videos and filming content. 
So I'll link what I have down below, but like one of my biggest mistakes was getting a bad, like a cheap tripod to begin with. It's just caused me so much annoyance. And also my camera that I started out with was really, really annoying. So I don't know, it, it works. If you have a phone, a good phone, start with your phone. I feel like that can be a good way. But other than that, I will link what I use down below. And then in terms of the recording and editing process, all I, I could do like a whole video on that because it's quite a lengthy process, I think, at least for me. I'll usually end up with like quite a lot of footage, even though I've gotten better. I used to start out with like four hours of footage for a video. And then to bring that down to like 17, 18, 20 minutes is really hard. Now I have it down probably to like an hour and a half of footage, maybe two hours of footage. And then I bring that down once and then I edit it again. And then I just keep editing it until it gets down to like 20 minutes of footage. And editing used to take me almost 20 hours and now it probably takes me maybe 12 hours ish. I don't do voiceovers anymore and that's really helped me because that used to stress me out. But yeah, so I did just want to let you know that I might be decreasing my YouTube upload schedule a little bit. Maybe I'll go instead of like every single week of the month, I might go two weeks and then skip one week and then two weeks, skip one week, two weeks, skip one week. I'm trying to decide that <laughs> essentially because I just want to, a couple things. I want to be able to also be creative on other platforms like Instagram and TikTok and I'm finding that that would be impossible right now with where I'm at. I know some people do weekly uploads or two uploads a week. I have no idea how that's possible, but for me with my abilities, it's like literally impossible. Since 2018, when I really started with YouTube again, I have had literally no free time and no work-life balance. And I don't say that as a good thing at all whatsoever. To me, that's like one of the worst things. And that's been one of the biggest sacrifices to me because I'm someone who really, really likes doing nothing. I really like relaxing. I like going to the beach. I like going shopping. I like just wandering around and doing things. And I haven't really been able to do that at all. And it's so been worth it because I was able to turn this into something that I do full time. But I was really hoping that once I started doing it full time, which was a year ago, that I would now have that like, I can like relax and have time to do those things and allow myself to do those things. And instead, I'm still really stressed. I, so I wrote down my goals for the year. That's my number one goal is to find a way to create while also being fair to myself and having time to relax and spend time with friends and family and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to be adjusting a little bit i'll let you know what i land on but like honestly i love youtube this has been the best thing ever if i were to compare how i felt and my outlook on life before doing youtube when i had free time but i was doing my corporate job and my outlook on life was so bleak and now my outlook is not bleak and it's so worthwhile i can't think of the word right now but it, i look to my future and i think this is awesome but i'm just stressed you know and i need to decrease the stress but I'm really thankful for the outlook that you guys have given me. I'm grateful that I'm able to do this. I love doing this. I love being creative and I love storytelling and I love having videos that are more relaxing and can act as an escape. So thank you so much for being here. Thanks for listening in on these random questions that I've just answered. If you have more questions that you want me to answer, drop them down below. The next time that I do a q and I will pick some questions, but Thank you once again. I love you so much. You guys have changed my life. YouTube has changed my life. You guys have literally changed my whole outlook on life. So thank you so much. I love you. Bye.